when we're talking classifications of ecosystems it is one main dot point it is this one here and we are bringing in a little bit about habitats as well all right so when you go to the supermarket and you want to find something really quickly it's really easy because items are grouped according to their type and features right makes total sense Scientists like to do the same thing, right? They like to organize and classify and categorize all the world around them for similar reasons. So classification lets scientists order nature in some way so they can group like objects with similarities and it lets them find links and relationships between these different things. Now, ecologists continue to collect ongoing quantitative and qualitative data from ecosystems, and they can use it to develop and refine the models that we've been talking about, so competitive exclusion, all those kinds of things. And it gives us a better understanding of relationships between organisms and their ecosystem. Now, we can use this data to better classify the habitats that they live in based on their abiotic conditions and biotic interactions. And then once we classify those habitats, we can do the same for the entire ecosystem based on what types of habitats um, they're composed of. So classifying ecosystems uh, helps us to recognize them and lets us measure their extent in the world. So we might be talking about a threatened species or we might be talking about an entire threatened ecosystem. Uh, classifying ecosystems helps us to understand the interactions of individual organisms and in different ecosystems. So, you know, you might be talking about a keystone species, for example, um, and really complex layered uh, food webs. They, uh, classifying also allows us to inform our management strategies um, and protection plans, right? So we need conservation and rehabilitation, and we also need to manage land on a, on a regular basis as well. And it's vital to conserve and manage ecosystems to maintain biodiversity and, you know, selfishly to maintain our ability to use these natural resources that we use from the land. So broadly, we can classify ecosystems as either terrestrial or aquatic. And that's what we're going to talk about and different ways we can classify. Right, terrestrial ecosystems are distributed based on variation and distribution and the conditions of their climate mainly. Um, so we're talking temperature, water, light and wind, and they're the main elements we're considering, as well as things like soil nutrients. Um, biodiversity within an ecosystem will depend on the limiting abiotic factors and our major terrestrial ecosystems are known as biomes. So we might be talking desert, tundra, temperate grassland, or open forest or a variety of other ones. Now, aquatic ecosystems are broadly categorized into marine and freshwater, um, and whether they're sort of moving water or still or standing water. Uh, oceans account for about 71% of the surface of the earth. So huge numbers and types of ecosystems are involved here. And they're classified using the depth, distance from the shoreline, temperature, light penetration, all those kinds of things. So the deeper they go, the darker and colder they get, and the more pressurized they are as well. So it limits organism distribution. Freshwater sources, uh, they can be still or moving, you know, we're talking lakes, ponds, swamps versus rivers, creeks and streams. And estuaries have high fluctuations in salt concentration, so they're really unique to those pure salts, uh, compared to, sorry, those pure salt and water ecosystems. We have lots of frameworks that we use, and we use international, national, and local, regional ones as well. Um, now, the Australian government uh, has broken up Australia into 89 bioregions, a bioregion being a large geographically distinct area of land with common characteristics such as geology, landform patterns, climate, ecological features, and plant and animal communities. Um, now, Queensland uh, state government has taken this a little bit further within their own state and closely monitoring the 13 bioregions that exist within Queensland. Um, and the bioregions idea uses, um, you know, land zones and vegetation type as well to classify. And this assists with land management, uh, and, you know, including things like fire management and, and land clearing and things like that. 